Hello again everybody. Right, final video in this series of all these run-throughs of everything, just trying to, to let you know how I do things. So, um, input effect bank A. It's really the only input effect bank that I tend to use because I don't I don't use the effects within the RC to for effects on my guitar. I might stick the odd delay on here and there in which I'll switch to a different bank. But most of the time, I just have these three effects that you see lit up on all of the time. And it's on bank A all of the time, just because it makes my life a lot easier. So um, you can see the harmony is connected to my FS7. So I can bring that harmony on and off uh, as I wish, depending on when I want to stick some harmonies on a track. But the other ones are set to do a few other things. So let's just go into uh, the input effects. So you can see, if I'm just going to go into to A first, you can see I've got a harmony, it's set to a third above for this song. Um, we're in the key of C. Occasionally I'll sing it in the key of D, depends, but yeah, so for this one, so that would work nicely. Um, and then I've got my reverb on bank B, pretty much just set as it is, and then I've just adjusted the, the effect level. Now it's important to note that this reverb, this first reverb, is going to instrument two, so that is for my cajon. So I know I've got a, a little bit of reverb to add to my cajon and it's always on rather than me having to switch banks and things like that. So it's just a lot, makes my life a lot easier. So I've got a bit of reverb here to put on my cajon. If I want to add more reverb, I can do that depending on the venue, depending on the song. And I can even add some reverb um, to my desk, to, uh, to the cajon channel on my desk as well. Next up, uh, let's go over to instrument, uh, sorry, input effect bank. Bank A and it's effect C. This is adding a bit of vocal compression to my vocal microphone. So again, it's just the inserts just go into mic one. And that is about as, as much, I don't want to add too much, just literally turning this thing on and it adds a little bit of compression. You can obviously adjust the effect type depending on what you want to do it with, but the vocal compression seems to add a, a, something a little bit nicer to my vocal sound. And then this one here is a reverb again for my vocal microphone. It depends on the song, how much reverb I actually I actually have on there. So I've used my mic one as an insert again. So in a nutshell, we've got dynamics and reverb for the vocals and for the microphone. We've got a reverb for my cajon and then we've got the harmony effect that I turn on and off depending on when I want to use it within a song. Then I'm gonna go into the actual EQ settings of of the vocals. Let's do the vocal microphone EQ first of all. So I've set the um, vocal mics to go at the input stage of mic one. So I'm going to press uh, menu, I go to input, I go to EQ, and then I go to mic, mic one input. So you can see I've, I've turned it on. I've left the low gain and the high gain as is. And then my frequency is down to 250 hertz. My Q is at one, so that it's a quite a, a fine adjustment at that, oh, there we go, at that particular frequency. And then I've cut um, eight dB from the low mids. For the high mids, I've made the Q slightly, slightly wider, at frequencies at 400 hertz, and my gain is just minus two dB. Um, level zero, low cut's 100 hertz, high cut is flat. And that's how I'm getting, using my SM58, I'm just getting a lot more clarity come through the vocals, and I will demonstrate that in a few minutes' time. Um, and what I'll do is I'll go over, go over, rig everything up again, so you can hear what it sounds like with that EQ and without. And then if we go to my uh, my cajon, I've EQ'd my minor pickup cajon slightly differently as well. So this took a lot more sort of trial and error. Um, I just wasn't getting a nice sound through that pickup. It sounded terrible and I wasn't even close to even sending it back. But after reading up on how to EQ a pickup Gahan and watching some videos myself, I did actually discover um, some really helpful information. So we're gonna turn on um, the, the EQ. Again, zero, zero, so we're just flat with the low gain and high gain. My low mids, I've got 125. Um, and a, a low mid Q of two, so again slightly wider, and then um, I've re I've really have cut that those low mids down, so minus fifteen dB. And then for the high mids, we've got the frequency here three point one kilohertz. Uh, we've really really narrowed down the Q, um, and we've just left the gain as is. 
and then we've left everything else flat. That is giving me a, a really nice, um, really nice punch to my Minel pickup cajon. It doesn't rumble too much, and again, I'll demonstrate what it sounds like with and what it sounds like without. So let's go and have a listen to those. Okay, so we'll talk about the mic EQ first of all, um, and you'll see that I have my mic set up in front of me. Um, we're just going to be listening through these two speakers here. So if I just get a bit closer to the mic, you can hear the EQ is currently off. Um, and this is what the mic naturally sounds like with some reverb, with loads of reverb actually. So let's just do a little bit of singing without the EQ. We get it almost every night. And then we turn the EQ on. We get it almost every night. Off. When that moon is big and bright. And on. When that moon is big and bright. So I'm not sure if you can hear it too well, but basically it's just a lot tighter. There's a lot more clarity coming through in the vocals when I have my EQ settings set up that way um, and there's a lot more sort of low low mids and bottom end coming through without the EQ which is why I use that EQ. If I go to um, my output for my um, cajon now which is over here what I've done is I've just recorded I'm just going to turn it off first and I've just recorded a little rhythm so hopefully you can hear this it's going to be a little bit more bottom end, a little bit more rumble coming through. Uh, it's, it's a very unpleasant sound in the room, but you might not be able to hear it too well, but hopefully we'll be able to hear some sort of differences. So here it is. And then with it on. And off. And on. So it might be quite subtle listening back to it, but when you're in the room, it makes a massive difference. It's a lot tighter, a lot, it's just a lot clearer coming through rather than that rumble bottom end I don't like. Um, so, the, yeah, that's how I've EQ'd everything, everybody. Um, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I hope this four-part series of videos has been useful. If you have found the video useful, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop. You can support the channel through the various links below, and I will see you all in the next one. Ta-ta!